On today's show. Working with children is wonderful. They, they've got joy. They're, they're full of hope. You can, I can see why Jesus said, you know, you can't enter the kingdom of heaven unless you think like a child. You've got the heart of a child where you're willing to just believe. Welcome to the 700 Club Canada. I'm Lori Hartshorn. And I'm Brian Warren, and we are happy that you've joined us today. For many of you, March break is coming to an end. For others, it's just about to begin. Either way, we're glad that you found the time between unpacking and packing, cleaning up, and ignoring the mess to be with us today. Uh, do you have a, a favorite spring break memory? Absolutely, hands down. Our family had the privilege of going to Florida every spring break for many years and one year a whole bunch of families we pulled trailers and we went down and we actually camped in Disney World in the campground at Disney World wow. I'm telling you caravan. it is amazing I'm a huge Disney fan just want to say hi to Mickey Mouse and uh, <laughs> you know the brilliance of Walt Disney and yeah. it's for everyone yeah the everyone. brilliance of Walt Disney yeah. you know I expected you as a teacher to say something completely different, but you know, you kind of threw me I'm all about fun, Brian, well, I'm telling I'm, you. I'm, I'm, I got that, I really got that. Hey, Mickey Mouse. Work and, hard, you know, the, play hard. The one thing I love about uh, Walt Disney is he says, whenever you get something, an idea, he said, work it, work it, yeah. and work it yeah. until it comes to pass. Phenomenal yeah. story and yeah. how that has built from uh, right. humble beginnings to where it is today. For sure, I, it's in our family. I have a brother who built theme parks. Oh, so, right? oh yeah, oh We're yeah, I got, I got, I got yeah. more stories to tell, but we'll hold that for another show. Okay. On today's program, we're going to look at the world of technology like never before. On the side, you'll get a behind the scenes look at the making of Superbook. We'll see what goes into writing each episode. It's amazing. I gotta start asking you more questions. Yeah. Also on today's show, Paul Robertson, youth and culture specialist, will put persuasive technology in focus. Now, it sounds innocent enough, but persuasive technology is actually being used to track our online tendencies to alter our thoughts and habits. The most vulnerable are our youth. That's the dark side of technology. Mm. And today, James Kelly from Faith Tech continues his search for the good. Now, that's the cool side of technology. But first, a behind the scenes look at the writing of Superbook. So amazing. Mm -hmm. I am Sean Gaffney, and I am one of the writers of Superbook. I have written such episodes as Joseph and Pharaoh's Dream. I have heard it said of you that you can understand a dream to interpret it. And Revelation, The Final Battle. Be gone, Satan! Our goal at Superbook is to introduce the Bible and biblical truths to the children of the world. We're in 38 plus languages right now. By the time we air, it's probably gonna be more than that. It's growing all the time. A temptation that some people get when they're writing for children is to try to make it childish for them. We don't water down the Bible. Another interesting uh, challenge that comes with Superbook is we are taking history. We're taking real people uh, in real time, and we're having them interact with fictional characters, with Chris and Joy and a robot. Joseph, I got it. What you need is an A number one plan, a plan to get you out of here. We have an entire team at Superbook of biblical experts, archaeology experts, history experts who go through our episodes and make sure that we are not violating who the character is. There are a lot of writers on Superbook, and it actually, the stories don't start with the writer. They actually start with Gordon Robertson and his team going through and figuring out which stories do we want to tell. The most challenging, the most fun, and the most rewarding episode I have worked on is Revelation. It's such a, a rich, complex book. It's so huge. The heart of the episode is, can you really be forgiven? Can you ever forgive me? And Chris finding out that not only can he be, the work has already been done. The battle has already been won. It was a fantastic episode to work on, and, and the way that the episode was realized, I couldn't be prouder of it. 
When we create, for, for those of us who are writers, for our artists, our model for creation, of course, is God. We were made in the image of a creator. It's hovering over the story. And for me, that means prayer, letting the spirit speak to me. I'm trying to get out of the way as much as possible so that the hovering can take place. Everybody said he couldn't do it, but he did it with God's help. I've worked on a lot of different kinds of projects, and, and this one is, is unique in that my hopes are too small for where God's taking this. The story is I like what Sean said, uh, Sean Gaffney, and he said, you know what, I worked on a lot of projects, but he said, this one really has my passion. And he says, we don't water down the word. Right, I mean, look at the details, the experts in history, mm -hmm. in biblical scholarship, yes. right, in archeology. span yes. I just have even a greater appreciation yes. for watching as they paint the story, and they know parents are watching with kids too, so it appeals to the wider audience, right? Well, you know, Many times when we see uh, how Christian material and also literature is being presented, we think that we have to dumb it down or water it down for children. But in reality, it's the same story. It's kind of like the three little pigs. You could say the three little pigs went to the market and then all of a sudden they found uh, a robot. You know, a kid will say, that's not the story. And there's something that really doesn't ring in our minds. But when you tell the story uh, the way that it was meant to be told, then you see the response that God meant to receive. And that is, lives are changed. That's right. And yeah. Listen, we've got it right here. This yes. is Revelation, the story that, that we were getting a behind the scenes look. And I haven't seen it yet, so I'm personally going to be have. watching it's it. It's powerful. Well, it looks amazing. Yeah. And you know, when you join the, the club, the Superbook Club, you get three DVDs, mm -hmm. right? One for you and two to give away. Yes. And again, we've even encouraged people on our program to invite kids, you know, from your neighborhood or have a gathering where you can share the good news of That's the right. Bible in such an inspiring way. And for just $25 a month, what you get an opportunity to do is keep one, give one away, and then begin yeah. to sow one into the place that you're going. That's it would right. be an encouragement if you call right now and say, I want to be a part of the Superbook Club. one 855 700 Prayer partners are standing by. And we'll make sure when the latest copy comes out, we'll get that into your hands. Yeah, really good stuff. Well, up next, world-famous children entertainer Sean W. Smith has a glowing review of Superbook. Watch. Can't wait to play this. Thanks. This Easter from Superbook. Is it's just a game? Yes, the kind your parents have told you not to play. God will show you a way out, even when you're tempted. You're not allowed to play that game. It's no big deal, Joy. Join the Superbook Club and get Superbook's newest episode, Jesus in the Wilderness, plus two copies to share with others, all for your gift of only $25. And as a bonus, receive the Superbook Easter Double Feature, which includes The Last Supper, He is Risen, a family discussion guide, and much, much more. I will give them all to you if you will worship me. Satan is tempting him to defy his father. Do not test the Lord your God. Join the Superbook Club today, and for a limited time, receive the Easter double feature, which includes the Last Supper, and he is risen as our way of saying thanks. Superbook Club members, free streaming for seasons one, two, and three is now available. Sean W. Smith is an internationally acclaimed speaker and musician from Australia who's been called the hottest Christian children's entertainer in the world. Working with children is wonderful. They, they've got joy, they're, they're full of hope. It's, I can see why Jesus said, you know, you can't enter the kingdom of heaven unless you think like a child, you've got the heart of a child, where you're willing to just believe. Last year, this world-renowned entertainer began including excerpts from CBN's Superbook in his appearances. I just love Superbook from my kids and our family. And so I wanna show you a little clip of Superbook up on the screen. Hi, we're back. And, Kids are captivated by things that are entertaining, and that's what I love about Superbook. It's visually engaging, but also presents great truth. It doesn't just present the Bible story, but it presents the practical application with Christian joy 
how does this outwork in my day-to-day -day life? And kids learning the heart of generosity through episodes of Superbook, learning courage, learning to stand up for what's right. I think that's the power of Superbook. It readies your kids to be battle ready for life. In fact, Sean gives out free Superbook DVDs at his appearances. I'm not sponsored by Superbook. I just love it everywhere I go. I will tell people, if you don't have Superbook, you need to go check it out. Sean says now is the time to tell the world about Jesus. And he's thankful that Superbook is helping him do just that. I definitely believe that children can be led to Christ through Superbook. We did a couple of big outreaches and we went into many public schools and we had hundreds and hundreds of families come and, and we were able to give every family that made a decision to say yes to Jesus, to give them a copy of Superbook. I wanna thank the partners of Superbook for investing. Thank you for all the people that work hard. Thank you for the people that have a spirit of excellence. We appreciate you and uh, we look forward to being able to help make Superbook famous all over this earth. You know, that's very powerful. When you think about, we change, we keep everything the same, except with the two kids and a robot. But at the same time, we will take a little bit of liberty by having that sacrifice at night and looking at a new day. And talking about Abraham, you know, most people don't even know who Abram is, Abraham, and where that comes from. But when you begin to understand Yet we are in the blessing of Abraham. We're no, on, no longer under the curse of Adam when we come into Jesus Christ, but we begin to now come into that blessing that he says in Genesis 12, I will bless those who bless you, I'll curse those who curse you. And he says, all the nations of the world will be blessed through you. Now that's the blessing of Abraham. And how do children understand that? The same way adults do, by not only seeing it, seeing it, and hearing it, and hearing it over and over again, but beginning to understand that this is a promise that God has made us. And because God makes covenant, and that means God makes promises, he does not break the promise. Isn't that beautiful? And therefore, you know, I encourage you. I know with, with our church and the children that are in our Kidsville, we love Superbook because it does help us not only tell the story in a, in a very powerful way with uh, great uh, uh, animation, but it also, when you join the Superbook DVD club, you get all of the class material and some other things as well, and games and, and beautiful things to help you tell the story of Jesus Christ in a very now way. If you haven't joined, 1-855-759-0700. Prayer partners are standing by. And uh, check the app out. You will not be disappointed. Up next, can technology save lives? Faith Tech James Kelly seeks to find the answer. Don't go away. Daddy? Yeah, buddy? How many nickels are in a dollar? There are 20 nickels Look, in a dollar. How do birds fly? Does milk really make my bones stronger? Yeah, yeah. Daddy, when we die, will we go to heaven? Do you have the answer to life's biggest question? Call the 700 Club. We'll help you find answers to the important questions life brings your way. Can technology save lives? Here in Canada, over 8,000 people a month now are searching this phrase in Google, how to kill yourself. And the top search result is seven easy, painless ways to kill yourself. That's disgusting, that's horrible. Here's what's crazy though. About two years ago, a small team got together, they heard about this and they said, we're going to do something. So they did something simple. They bought the domain, howtokillyourself.org. But instead of going on their website and finding here's how to do it, they have three simple words at the top. You're not alone. Man, that's amazing. Now, fast forward a year later, one of the developers on the team, she comes and says, James, I, I gotta chat with you. I'm thinking, you know, what's the matter? She says, last night I'm out for coffee with my friend. I start describing the website, the fonts, the colors, everything that I was creating. And my friend just stopped in her tracks. She grabbed my arm and she said, what is the domain of that website? And she said, howtokillyourself.org. The friend just started crying. The night before, she went online to figure out how to kill herself. And she said, I ended up on that website and that site saved my life. 
That's unbelievable. When could a website actually help save someone's life? It's completely changed the paradigm in my thinking. I know technology is used to destroy, it's used to corrupt, it's used to bring us down, but man, there is this beautiful light in using technology to help transform lives, change lives, and yes, save lives. So why don't you and I remember that Jesus Christ transformed this weapon of torture for a tool of salvation. Yeah, that's a great question, but also a great response from James Kelly, Faith Tech. Thank you, James. You know, uh, depends, on, depends on whose hands it's in. That's so true. And you know what? I love that we get to do what we're doing right now because we yes. are actually leveraging technology that's right. with the good news of the gospel. That's right. That's what we have to be in the mission of, of taking the technology that we have and utilizing it to proclaim the message of Christ and the message of hope, just like he told it that story. 100%. It was amazing. And, I, and I think what we really have to understand is it's a tool. Yeah. And uh, like anything else, money is a tool. Mm -hmm. And if it's in the wrong hands, it can actually become a weapon. Mm -hmm. You know, if you put a, a, a hockey stick in my hands, I mean, it's a weapon. But you put it in uh, Sidney Crosby, man, it's a, it's a tool. And mm -hmm. it becomes uh, mm -hmm. poetry in motion, right? Yeah, so we got to take responsibility, right? And that's the point. That's yeah. what I'm For saying. For how we're using it and what we're doing with it, That right? is, that is. Absolutely, because it is powerful. It is. And it can actually help a lot of Absolutely, good. absolutely. So we're glad we're spreading the good news through mm -hmm. TV right now. Up next, the dark truth behind the technology that tracks your online habits when you return with InFocus. Looking forward to it. This Easter, from Superbook. I will give them all to you if you will worship me. God will show you a way out, even when you're tempted. Satan is tempting him to defy his father. Do not test the Lord your God. Join the Superbook Club and get Superbook's newest episode, Jesus in the Wilderness. And for a limited time, receive the Easter double feature, which includes the Last Supper, and he is risen as our way of saying thanks. Superbook Club members, free streaming for seasons one, two, and three is now available. Well, welcome to In Focus. Are you aware that every time you look at Facebook or you search the web, technology developers are building a persuasive profile based on your online habits? Developers are even hiring psychologists to help in the mental manipulation of teens whose habits can tell if they're feeling happy or sad or insecure. Wow. Well, joining me today on Skype to discuss this frightening reality is Paul Robertson. Paul is a youth culture, culture expert with over 40 years experience working with youth, many of which Paul has spent at Toronto Youth for Christ. Well, welcome to In Focus, Paul. We're so glad that you're here today. Um, I have personally benefited from your experience. So I want you to answer this question, Paul, like to define for us, what is persuasive technology? What does that mean? Well, you kind of hit on it in the introduction. The persuasive technology is basically the idea today that they can create digital technology, i.e. iPads, uh, smartphones, computers, whatever, that has the ability to alter human behavior and thought and choices, especially in the lives of our young people and in the minds of our young people as well. Wow, that is really frightening, Paul. I mean, I don't understand the intricacies of technology, but the fact that somehow they know how I'm feeling or how, how is that done? Like, can you even dumb it down for us to help us understand it better? Well, I, I think it's very simple. Facebook a few years ago had to admit that they were doing uh, persuasion profiles on on everybody who was on Facebook, but we focused primarily on the young people, and and based on what words that they might be typing into their their posts or whatever they were doing, they would pick up on certain words that might indicate that they were lonely or they were depressed or they were anxious, and 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 instantaneously they would hit them with with advertiser or maybe another website that they need to go to. And it, it verges on, on manipulation. Now, they would call it persuasion. But, but basically, we have kids and adults as well making choices that aren't really theirs. They, they've been brought to that point via technology. Wow. I mean, maybe that explains why certain ads pop up on my screen 
in regards to what I might be shopping or looking for? Is that the same thing? Exactly. They know where you've been. They have a good idea where you want to go, and they feed you that kind of information. Big Brother is watching, right, Paul? Yeah. I mean, who's re somebody has to take responsibility for this. Where do you see the responsibility lying in, uh, in all of this? Well, I don't think this world is going to change in terms of technology. In fact, I think it's only going to get faster with more choices and, and scarier things that our kids can be exposed to. And I think so much of this comes back to, to who's in charge in the house, who knows what's going on with their screens and what they're doing. And ultimately, that's a responsibility of mom and dad. Right. And that's tough, isn't it? I mean, I've raised a few kids, Paul. You know them. And you know yeah. many families and how difficult yeah. it is to even, as your kids get older, it's harder to know what they're doing. Is um, Tell me a little bit about the difference between uh, girls and boys when it comes to social media and their use of phones and this whole idea of um, being affected by this technology. Yeah, great question. Uh, boys and girls uh, are affected differently by this. I mean, basically what persuasive technology has done is it creates an environment out there in cyberspace where kids feel it's it's more fun to grow up. They feel that their basic needs of life can be met out in cyberspace more so than here in reality. For girls, it's all about social media. So technology goes to psychology and says, how can we hook young girls and keep them on screens as long as possible? And of course, the obvious answer is social media sites. Girls' basic drive is to be accepted. It's to be uh, sociable, to have friends. The kiss of death for a girl online is when somebody speaks against them or shuns them or they're excluded. So it's a game of inclusion and exclusion for girls. It creates a couple of problems for girls. So one is you will never look as perfect as you want your selfie to look. When you look in the mirror, that's reality. And when you're bombarded continuously with hundreds of pictures from other girls who have been doctored up and, and, and curated, that, that only has that negative effect on their self-esteem. The other issue for girls is the way they practice aggression. Girls tend to be more verbal in their aggression as opposed to boys. And so there is a lot of cyberbullying. There's a lot of putting each other down online for the girls, uh, calling girls out, saying things to them online that you would never do in person. And so to keep girls addicted to screens, we have social media. Right. What about the boys? The boys, it's all about competency and having a sense of achievement. So when technology goes to psychology, hey, what do we need to do to hook the boys? Online video gaming. Now, not all online video gamers are boys. There are a few girls. But a boy's brain is wired to, to have action and movement. I was at my three-year-old grandson's birthday the other day, and, and it wasn't the little piano that interested him. It was the cars that went zooming round and round. Right. Not a lot has changed, right? What we see in the playground in the school actually is working itself out online. If you can summarize for us uh, as quickly as you can even, what's a response as parents, as grandparents, as guardians of children? Well, I think, number one, parents need to be praying. Pray that God will protect their hearts and minds and watch over them. Uh, you know, pornography is rampant. We have younger and younger kids being exposed to us. So we need to be praying for our kids. Secondly, we need to model for our kids the kind of screen life that we want them to have. Too many parents are texting and driving, texting, watching their screens at the dinner table. You have to be the example of what you want your kids to grow up to be. Find a plan to cut back on screen time in your family because we have, on average, kids spending seven, eight hours a day on screens. Find a plan to cut back on that. And second, or, and, and finally, the most important thing of all is no screens, no electronic devices in the bedroom at night because kids are on them. I know you trust your kids and your kids would never do anything like that. But trust me, no screens in the bedroom. Well said, Paul. Thank you so much for insight. Thank you so much for the work that you do across our nation. And we are going to take this to heart. Uh, good boundaries. We're going to get on our knees and pray. And we want to watch out for our kids. So that's some really helpful in focus for you today. We'll be right back.
Lori, I really appreciated your interview with Paul Robertson, you know, and uh, when we look at the program, there seems to be a common theme between this, mm -hmm. starting off with Disney. Starting off with Disney. Yes, and yeah. also talking about technology and how yeah. it can actually become uh, harmful well, if we don't. As you said, it's a tool. Yes. Right? And I thought Paul's instruction to us was so clear, mm -hmm. you know? Like, we need to be very aware of the dangers that are out there. We need to set boundaries for the kids that we take care of, right? Yes. We need to set a good example for our kids. Nudge, nudge, right? Yes. And we need to pray for our kids because this is the evil of our time. The thing that fascinated me also is how boys use it and, yeah. you know, online gaming and different things and girls for more social That's and, right. and how Paul was talking about. But what we need to do is pray for the caregivers yeah. because as much as our sons and our daughters are, are using technology for different things, we recognize that it can be very difficult for them to get beyond this if someone is not standing in the gap That's as an right. intermediary That's for right. them. Let's pray for Let's that. Let's do that. Well, Father, we ask that you would give us wisdom. You say in James, if you ask for wisdom, I'll give it to you generously. Yes. So would you just give every caregiver, every parent, guardian, aunt, uncle, grandparent, great wisdom and discernment mm -hmm. in regards to the use of technology. We thank you for it, and we ask that we would be a part of redeeming it for good in our nation and around the world. Guard over our children, Lord Jesus, we pray in your name. Amen. Amen. And we also agree with what God is doing in Faith Tech with James Kelly. God, raise up more of those James Kellys. Raise up more of those uh, dot com evangelists and revivalists, we pray. Lord, help us to understand this current uh, environment that we're living in, but also to use it for your glory. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. That's great. Well, 1 John 3, 1 says, See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And this is what we are. Hey, stay in that place. Until next time, we love you. God bless you. Take care. To contact us, phone 1-855-759-0700. You can email us at cba at 700club.ca. You can now like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter or Instagram. Next week on the 700 Club Canada. What if there's actually seeing a sign? And there's only one sign that's a female in the 12, and that's Virgo. And Virgo becomes very crucial to understanding the time of Jesus' birth. I talk about that in the book. Yes. And it's one of those things where you look back and you say, there's no way this is accidental. God loves us on purpose. He does things with purpose and for purpose.